Hi, I'm Zhen Xu from UMass Amherst, and we'll present our method for automatically producing character rigs, called RigNet. Given an input mesh presenting a character, such as the humanoid puppy you see here, when it goes through our network, RigNet, it first produces a skeleton tailored for its underlying articulation structure and geometry, and then produces a skinning weight vector per mesh vertex indicating the degree of influence it receives from different bones. Character rigs have been the workhorse for the articulated figure animation for over three decades. Without rigs, it's difficult for animators to animate their character models. The motivation of RigNet is to automate the rigging process. As a result, animators can now drive the skeletons to animate models. There are previous works aiming at automatic rigging the input 3D models. The earliest approach was Pinocchio, which performs optimization to feed a predefined skeleton template to a 3D model. However, handcrafting template for every possible structure variation of a character is cumbersome. There have been various geometry approaches of skinning. However, since they are hand-engineered, sometimes the results deviate from artists' expectations. In our earlier work, I introduced a deep learning approach to produce skeletons through a volumetric network. However, it suffers from voxelization artifacts, low resolution, and the elimination of surface features useful for joint detection. In another recent work, neuroskinning attempts to learn skinning from a training set. It requires input joint categorization and a global skeleton template. Their method doesn't handle skeleton prediction. On the contrary, our method proposes deep learning-based complete solution to rigging, which includes both skeleton and skinning prediction. Our method achieves with better results compared to previous works. The task of automatic rigging comes with many challenges. Predicting an animation skeleton and skinning from an arbitrary single static 3D mesh is ambitious. One challenge is that character in camera graphics can vary a lot in geometry, number of parts, and the overall row structure, as I show here in this animator-created rigs. Similarly, when computing skinning weights, animator will perceive structures as highly rigid or smoother. For example, here I visualize the skeleton of a nail character. The skinning weights on the shell moves rigidly as a whole according to the bone here, while the rest of the body deforms more smoothly according to the rest of the bone. A learning method should capture the skinning variability Finally, another challenge for rigging method is to allow easy and direct control over the level of detail for the output skeleton. As you can see from this animator-created rigs, while animators largely agree on skeletal topology and layout of joints for an input character, there is also some ambiguity both in terms of the number and exact joint placement. To address the above challenges, we propose a deep learning architecture with three stages. We first apply a skeletal joint prediction module, which is trained to predict the appropriate number of joints and their placement, to capture the articulated mobility of input character. As skeletal joint resolution can depend on the intended animation task, we provide users an optional parameter that can control the level of detail of the output skeleton. Second, to form a skeleton from the predicted joints, we apply a skeleton connectivity module to predict the hierarchical tree structure connecting the joints. The output bone structure is a function of predicted joints and shape feature of the input character. Finally, we apply a third skinning prediction module to produce skinning weight, indicating the degree of influence each vertex receives from different bones. All these modules are trained in a supervised manner from character rigs mined online. I'll describe input and each module one by one. The input to the entire network is a single 3D model in its mesh representation. Our approach operates directly on the input mesh. The first module of our architecture, Joint Prediction Module, is trained to predict the location of joints that will be used to form the animation skeleton. To this end, it learns to displace mesh geometry towards candidate joint locations. The module is based on a neural network which extracts topology and geometry aware features from the mesh to learn these displacements. At the same time, we also learn a weight function over the input mesh, 
which is used to reveal which surface areas are more relevant for localizing joints. This can be seen as a form of neural mesh attention. After that, we introduce a differentiable clustering scheme, which uses both displaced vertices and the neural mesh attention to collapse the vertices further to potential positions of the joints. Since areas with higher point density and greater mesh attention are strong indicators of joint presence, we result to mean shift clustering and then maximum suppression to extract joints. In classical mean shift clustering, each data point is equipped with a kernel function. At each iteration, all points are shifted towards density modes. Here, we show the mean shift equation. We employ a variant of mean shift clustering, where the kernel is also modulated by the vertex attention. In this manner, points with greater attention influence the estimation of density more. Here, we show the shift equation in our implementation. We use a panectic curve kernel in our implementation. Note that the kernel function takes the parameter h as bandwidth. The bandwidth can be learned simultaneously as we train the network. The bandwidth also allows optional user control on the level of detail or granularity of the output skeleton. We found that modifying the bandwidth directly affects the level of detail of the output skeleton. Here is an example. Lowering the bandwidth parameter results in denser joint placement, while increasing it results in sparse skeleton. By overriding the learned bandwidth, users can adjust the results to their preference. At test time, the mode centers of clusters are extracted with non maximum suppression as the final detected joints. Now we'll discuss more details about the networks used to learn the vertex displacement and attention. We call this network GMHNet. The main operation of this network is geodesic mesh convolution, which we call GMH -Cov. The GMH convolution is inspired by the H convolution in DGCNN. The main difference is that our operators is applied to meshes and geodesic neighbors. Specifically, given the surface vertex, we consider its one ring mesh neighbors, and also the vertices located within the geodesic board centered at it. We also found it's better to learn separate MLPs for mesh and geodesic neighborhoods, and then concatenate their outputs and process them through another MLP. In this manner, the networks learn to weight the importance of topology-aware feature over more geometry-aware ones. In GMHNet, we stack three GMH cough layers. Each of the GMH cough layers is followed by a global max pooling layer. The representation from each pooling layers are concatenated to form a global mesh representation. The poor vertex representations from all GMH cov layers, as well as the global mesh representation, are further concatenated, then processed through a three-layer MLP to output the poor vertex attributes, either the displacement or the attention. With all the components introduced above, we have built the complete joint prediction module which detects joints from a single input mesh. The training of the joint prediction module consists of two steps. In the first step, we pre-train the vertex attention module with heuristically generated ground truth masks, as you see on the right. The masks are one, as you see here in red and blue for zeros. For each training mesh, we find vertices closest to each joint at different directions perpendicular to the bones. We use cross entropy to measure consistency between the masks and the neural tension. In the second step, we minimize the symmetric chamfer distance between collapsed vertices and the training joints. The loss is differentiable with regard to all the parameters of the joint prediction stage, including the bandwidth, the displacement network, and the attention network. We found that adding supervisory signal to the vertex displacements before clustering helps improve joint detection performance. To this end, we also minimize chamfer distance between displaced points and ground truth joints, favoring tighter clusters. Given the joints extracted from the previous stage, the connectivity prediction module determines how these joints should be connected to form the animation skeleton. At the heart of the stage lies a learned neural module that outputs the probability of connecting each pair of joints via a bone. Such module we call bone net takes as input our predicted joints, along with the input mesh, and outputs the probability for connecting each pair of joints via a bone. 
the architecture of the module is shown in the green box. For each pair of joints, the module processes three representations. First, we capture the skeleton geometry with the point net operating on the joint locations. Then we capture the global shape geometry with our mesh network. And finally, an MLP for each candidate bone. The bone probability is computed via a two-layer MLP operating on the concatenation of these three representations. Besides pairwise connectivity probability, we also selected the root joint using a neural module called RootNet. Its internal architecture follows BoneNet. With this pairwise bone probabilities and the predicted root as the starting node, we apply Prime's algorithm to create a minimal spanning tree presenting the animation skeleton. We found that using these bone probabilities to extract the MST resulted in skeletons that are agreeing with the animator created ones more in topology. To train the connectivity prediction module, we build a probability matrix storing the probability for connecting each pair of joints with a bone based on our prediction. We also form such metrics based on animator created skeleton, encoding the connectivity of the skeleton. The value is 1 if the corresponding training joints are connected. Now the parameters of bone net can be learned using binary cross entropy between the training adjacency metrics and the predicted probabilities. After producing the animation skeleton, the final stage, skinning prediction module, applies another neural network to predict the skinning weights for each mesh vertex to complete the rigging process. To perform skinning, we first extract the mesh representation, capture the spatial relationship of mesh vertices with respect to the skeleton. Given the vertex on the mesh, for example, as shown here in purple, we compute the volumetric geodesic distance to all the bones passing through the interior mesh volume. Then we sort the bones according to their geodesic distance to the vertex, and created an ordered feature sequence up to the case bone. The feature vector for each bone concatenates the 3D positions of the starting and ending joints of this bone, and the inverse of the volumetric geodesic distance from the vertex to this bone. The final per-vertex representation is formed by concatenating the vertex position and the feature representations of the nearest case bone by the ordered sequence. The skinning prediction module converts the above skeleton wear mesh representations to skinning weights with a GMH net. We train the parameters of our skinning network so that the estimated skinning weights S agree as much as possible with the training ones. By treating the per-vertex skinning weights as a probability distribution, we use cross-entropy as loss. Now we show the experiment results and the evaluation of our method. To train our method and alternatives, we chose the model's resource rig net dataset of 3D articulated characters, which provides a non-overlapping training and testing split, and contains diverse characters. The dataset contains 2,703 rigged characters mined from an online repository spanning several categories, including humanoid, quadrupeds, birds, fish, robots, toys, and other fictional characters. Here we show some examples from the dataset. For skeleton extraction, here we show some artist created models and the results from our approach. Our results agree well with the ones created by the animators. Here we show the skeleton produced by Pinocchio. We highlight the mistakes introduced by Pinocchio with red boxes. We also show the results produced by a previous volumetric technique, with mistakes highlighted with red boxes. Next, we show the skinning weight prediction comparison. First are the results from our method. Here we visualize the skinning weights, where red means hair value, and skinning arrow maps, where yellow color indicates hair arrow and a different pose when we move the characters according to the skinning. Our predicted skinning weights capture the underlying articulate parts accurately. Here we show the results from a previous learning-based method for skinning. Their results overextend the skinning weights to a larger area than expected. Finally, we show results from a previous geometry method for skinning. The arrow is even higher. After training, our method is able to rig diverse 3D models, and they even generalize to models with different structure and parts. Here are examples from our test set.
Here, we show the quantitative comparison results of skeleton prediction to other skeleton prediction methods, including Pinocchio and my previous volumetric-based learning approach. We apply the Hungary algorithm to form a matching between predicted joints and ground truth ones. The IOU, precession and recall are defined based on the resulting matching. Higher numbers indicate better performance. We also evaluate chamfer distance between predict and ground truth joints, between joints and bones, and between bones. To measure chamfer distance of bones, we densely sample on the bone and calculate the chamfer distance between the samples. For chamfer distance, lower numbers indicate better performance. From the table, we can see our method outperforms the rest according to all measures. Here we show the quantitative comparison of skinning weights prediction to geometric approaches BBW and GeoVoxel, as well as a learning-based approach neural skinning. Precession and recall are measured by finding the bones that influence each vertex significantly. Average L1 measures the L1 norm of the difference between the predicted skinning vector and the reference one averaged for all mesh vertices. Average and the maximal distance measures the Euclidean distance between the position of vertices, deformed based on the ground truth skinning and the predicted skinning. Our approach achieves the best result on all measures. Here, we shall test the 3D models that were animated based on our predicted rigs. Our predicted rigs capture the arm and legs articulation correctly. Here we show another example that were animated based on our predicted skeleton and skinning, where all the limbs are rigged correctly by our method. Our method can handle non-human noise, predicting reasonable bones for this cat here. Our predicted skeleton across within families of test shapes are fairly consistent. We can apply automatic motion transfer techniques to animate them all together. To summarize, our method presents a first step towards a learning-based, complete solution to character rigs, including skeleton creation and skinning waste prediction. Our approach doesn't make assumption about the input on shape class and structure. Therefore, it can be generalized to characters with varying structure and morphology. Our approach also provides a single parameter that users can tune to control the output rig granularity. Our approach does have limitations and exciting avenues for future work. First, our method currently uses a per-stage training approach. Ideally, the skinning loss could be backpropagated to all the stages of the network to improve joint prediction. Second, our dataset has the limitations. It contains one rig per model. Many rigs often don't include bones for small parts, like feet, fingers, clothing, and accessories which makes our trained model less predictive for these joints. Finally, our current bandwidth parameter explores one mode of variation. Exploring a richer space to interactively control skeleton morphology and the resolution is another interesting research direction. We show here our project page including source code and our dataset. Thank you for your attention.